Alright guys, back with yet another forgotten script that never saw the light of day. If you like these types of videos, I got all these unmade scripts from a book called Taking Shape 2. It's available on Amazon and is packed with all kinds of different Halloween scripts that never made it to the big screen. Anyway, this video is dedicated to Logan. Thanks for supporting the channel, man, and being a big fan. Alright, so in the late 90s, there was a slasher craze sweeping the nation. We had films like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Bride of Chucky, all seemed to fit this grungy teen angst aesthetic. A group of partying teens just trying to have fun despite their strict ass parents. Late 90s rock, a serial killer terrorizing a small town, it was pretty much copy and paste at the time, but that doesn't mean that we don't love it, right? On this video, I'm going to talk about a version of Halloween H2O that never happened, so check it out. This version of Halloween H2O was written by Kevin Williamson, the guy who wrote the original Scream script. Back in the late 90s, following the Thorn trilogy, Kevin Williamson was hired to write a sequel that would further that storyline. I think it was originally supposed to be called The Revenge of Laurie Strode. But anyway, it's far from the Halloween H2O we actually got. So this one opens up the same way we remember, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and his buddy going into Nurse Marion's house and getting killed off. We meet Carrie Tate, who's still the headmistress of Hillcrest Academy, and of course is actually Laurie Strode. She still has a son. The difference is, Josh Hartnett's character is called Mick in this one. He has a strained relationship with his mom and wants to go live with his dad. At one point, Laurie's in a classroom where they're discussing fate, just like in the original 78 film. Sarah, some bitchy student, then brings up the Michael Myers murders and more or less explains the events of the last six movies. She even mentions Jamie Lloyd, so she's still canon in this version. The guidance counselor, Will, he's there, but his name is Jake now. He's concerned because Lori is pretty much an alcoholic. I mean, well, yeah, after all the trauma she's endured. And when he tries to bring this up to her, she flips out and is like, Thanks, Jake, for your well-intentioned and over-boundary-stepping concern. But just for your own personal file cabinet info, let me give you a quick flash lesson in the life of an alcoholic. Let me share with you my experience, strength, and hope, because I've done the AA thing, I've been in therapy, I've done the vomit pills, the moderators club, you name it, I've tried every little 80s self-help tactic device, and you know what I've discovered? In addition to the unconditional love of absolute citron, is that alcoholism isn't a negative in the 90s. It might have been self-destructive at one time, but it's a big plus in present day USA, because the world is not kind. It is harsh, and cruel, and bloody out there, and if my two aspirin a day comes in the form of a nice half gallon of Robert Mondavi, then so be it. And I can go to all the little 12 step meetings in the world, and I can say, Hi, I'm Carrie Tate, and I'm an alcoholic. And everyone can hold me and tell me everything's gonna be fine with Carrie once she quits drinking. But, what you seem to be missing from your loving and non-judgmental point of view is that Carrie doesn't exist. At the end of the day, the Halloween mask comes off, and it's Laurie Strode who has to find a way to get to sleep at night without a butcher's knife slicing into her dreams. So, she's basically masking her trauma with alcohol. I mean, we all do that, don't we? Anyway, back to Mick. He actually didn't know his mom was really Laurie Strode, or that he was related to Michael Myers. He does find out eventually, and then pulls a prank in the school locker room where he's wearing a Michael Myers mask, because I guess he's trying to get in trouble so he can get sent to go live with his dad, like I mentioned before. Later on, the school's having a dance, the real Michael arrives and kills the security guard, which is not LL Cool J, but some lady named Harriet. At the dance, Molly, Mick's girlfriend, has a run-in with Michael, but gets away. She tells Lori what happened, and they try to evacuate everyone without causing a mass panic. The cops get called, but are unable to reach Carrie and the rest, because the only way into the school is blocked. There's a tunnel that leads to the school that serves as the only entrance, but it gets blocked by a car accident that Michael caused. This is where things get really bad. So, unable to drive through, the police take a helicopter into the school and land. Four cops head in to search for Michael, while Jake and another officer load kids into the helicopter to take them to safety. Just then, Michael appears and kills the pilot, leaving Jake to fly the helicopter on his own. Wait, what? 
Well, that doesn't end well because Jake crashes the helicopter immediately, killing all the kids and himself. What an idiot. Lori witnesses the crash, and then her, Mick, and Molly escape in a school bus. But, as they're driving away, of course, Michael's clinging to the top of the bus. As they head down the tunnel, Mick and Molly are fighting Michael when the bus suddenly flips over. Michael ultimately kills Molly, and then Mick more or less beats the shit out of him. As this is going on, another police helicopter sees them, and then a bunch of cops rush down the tunnel at Michael. It's kind of similar to that Halloween 6 scene where he's fighting off all of like the doctors and like that surgical room with the strobe light. Kind of like that. In typical fashion, he kills them all off one by one. And then Lori runs to the helicopter and gets in as Mick leads Michael out of the tunnel. Then, somehow, Lori flies the helicopter. See, all these people just know how to fly a helicopter? Like, really? But here's the finale. Are you ready for it? So, as Michael emerges from the tunnel, Lori flies towards him, tilting the blades down, and cuts him in half. The end. Alright, so, not what you were expecting, was it? I mean, how did Lori know how to fly a helicopter? Anyway, the highlight of this one to me was the crazy tunnel fight with the cops. And, had it have been made, this one was going to have basically the same score and soundtrack that Scream did. So, picture that. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to check out Taking Shape 2. I'll see you later.